students welcome to lecture 2 on hadoop and big data we will recap the last session details in the last session we have discussed what is the purpose of hadoop the purpose of hadoop is to store and process large volumes of data that is big data the second one is what is big data big data means large volumes of data or huge amounts of data is known as big data we also we also discussed what are the characteristics of big data big data characteristics can be represented by using five v's the first v stands for volume second v velocity third v variety fourth v veracity fifth v is volume we also discussed what is hadoop hadoop is a open source framework which is used to store and process large amounts of data using hdfs and map reduce programming model and we also discussed when to use hadoop and when not to use hadoop also these are the uh, topics we have covered in the last session so in today's session we are going to discuss hadoop components hadoop architecture basic building blocks of hadoop hdfs and its architecture this is a today's class agenda students let's start the session hadoop components students uh, in the last from the last session onwards we are discussing what is hadoop and all isn't it hadoop is a framework which is used to store and process large amounts of data huge amounts of data using hdfs and map reduce programming model these are the different components of hadoop the different components of hadoop are one is hdfs another one is map reduce the third one is yarn these three are the major components of hadoop so the first component that is hdfs hdfs stands for hadoop distributed file system okay the, i i said that these are the different components of hadoop before discussing these components students i'll give an example for you where we usually use hadoop and its components uh, let us take an example of like i am having 1 lakh text documents with me 1 lakh text documents with me and each text document is of size of mb megabytes students i need to process those documents in such a way that i need to retrieve the frequency of a word called vignan again once again i am repeating i am having once again i am repeating an application i need to develop an application wherein the application details are like this there are 1 lakh text documents each document size is some megabytes those text documents i need to process in such a way that i need to find the word count of vignan word count of vignan to accomplish this task i'll be using hadoop why only hadoop why not the other technologies because i am having 1 lakh text documents with me 1 lakh text documents means some petabytes of data in order to store petabytes of data the suitable uh, technology is hadoop so only i'm using hadoop so this is the uh, application which i am uh, this is application i am going to develop using hadoop so in this application i am having two tasks i need to fulfill two tasks the first one is storing 1 lakh text documents the second task is processing 1 lakh text documents parallelly these two things i have to do here the first task is storing 1 lakh text documents to store 1 lakh text documents which is a huge amounts of data i use a component called hdfs hadoop distributed file system hadoop distributed file system is a file system which is used to store large amounts of data into hadoop this is a first component it's a storage component this comp by using this component i am going to store 1 lakh text documents into hadoop after storing what i am going to do I am going to process those documents. To process those documents, I will be using a programming model called MapReduce or a component called MapReduce. To, uh, 
process those documents, I have to write a logic or code to process it. This code or this logic I am I'm, I'm going to write by using a programming model called MapReduce MR program or MR job I am going to write. I have stored the uh, data using HDFS. I am going to process that data by writing a code in a programming model called MapReduce. This code, this map reduce program will process the data which is present in the HDFS. That is one lakh text documents, and it will it gives uh, and it gives back the result. Students, these two components are okay fine. HDFS is for storing the data, map reduce is for processing the data. The, the third one is YARN, yet another resource negotiator. YARN stands for yet another resource negotiator. Students, this is a component which is a resource manager. It manages all the resources present in a cluster. We will be forming a cluster, right? In that cluster, all the resources will be managed by this yarn component. Okay, so these are the three different components of Hadoop. HDFS stands for Hadoop. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. YARN stands for it, another resource negotiator. MapReduce is a programming model which is built on top of the Java. Okay, fine. So we have seen uh, the Hadoop components. We will be moving to the Hadoop architecture now. So the next topic is Hadoop architecture. Here I have uh, specified many elements like user, master, slaves and all. Students, uh, from the previous classes, so we know that what is Hadoop and its components, isn't it? Fine. In today's class, I mean in this in this uh, topic, Hadoop architecture, we'll be discussing very low level terminologies. That is, Hadoop is a framework which we know, we learned, we discussed in the previous class. But Hadoop is a, at very low level, it is a software. Hadoop is a software which needs to be installed first to work on it isn't it yes we need to install hadoop first and then we have to we are going to work on it installing hadoop where we are going to install hadoop in a machine yes in a machine only we are going to install but here in this case it is not a single machine right it's a group of machines connected together known as cluster why group of machines we have taken because Whatever the data we are speaking about, that is big data, cannot be stored in a single machine. So only we are going for group of machines, group of nodes interconnected with each other forming a cluster and in that cluster we are going to dump our big data and we are going to process it. For that we are using Hadoop framework. So now we are having a cluster here. Are we going to install the Hadoop on the cluster meaning on all the machines of the clusters it won't make any sense isn't it yes it won't make any sense because installing hadoop in each and every machine is a tedious task we cannot do it so what we are going to do for that is at first we will be forming a cluster on the top of the cluster we are going to install hadoop what does that mean? Installing Hadoop on top of the cluster means what does that mean? Students, if you observe uh, this architecture, we are having three different elements here. The first one is the slave nodes. I have, I have specified here Hadoop cluster. These are all the slave nodes. It's, it, it is again the machines, but I have represented them as slaves. And another, another one is master. We do have one more node called master. Don't get confused with the three machine, three nodes I have kept here to uh, to convey that this is a master machine. I have uh, taken it a bigger one. Okay, actually this is a server machine. Okay, it is a master. And the next one is the client machine. The user is sitting in front of one machine that I am calling it as a client machine. These three are the part of the cluster only. Slave nodes are nine. Master is 1 and the client machine is 1. 9 plus 1 plus 1. Totally 11 nodes I have taken here. With 11 nodes I have formed the cluster. It's 11 node cluster. You can take n number of nodes in a cluster. Depends on your requirement. Here I have taken 11 nodes. It is a 11 node cluster. Okay. In that 11 nodes I have uh, 
randomly picked one node and marked it as client machine. It's a client machine. Whatever you want, you can just pick one machine from the cluster and put the, I mean, uh, treat that as a client machine. Client machine, what does that mean? Whatever the client machine I'm speaking, in that machine only I'm going to install the Hadoop. Okay, first I have to set up the cluster. In that cluster, I'm going to pick randomly one machine. That machine, I'm calling it as client machine. In that machine, I'm going to install the Hadoop software. Only in that machine, but not in all the machines in the cluster. Okay, fine. After installing, after successful installation, now we are, the setup is ready. Now we can do the tasks by using Hadoop. So what are the tasks we are going to do? One is we can store big data. The second task is we can also process the big data. Okay, fine. So in the last uh, topic, we have discussed one example. What is that example, students? Suppose I am having 1 lakh text documents with me. I need to find out the word count of Vignan. Okay, that is a task we are going to uh, do. I mean, we are going to uh, discuss a little detail in this architecture. The first one is storing the 1 lakh text documents into Hadoop. I have, I, I installed Hadoop software. Now, where did I install Hadoop software? On the top of the cluster. What does that mean, students? In a client machine, I have installed the software, Hadoop software. That software, that client machine will in turn speaks with the other machines in the cluster. Okay, fine. Now, I need to store 1 lakh text documents into the machines. In which machines I am going to install, I am sorry, I am going to uh, store, I will be storing the data only in the slaves machines but not in the master machine but not in the client machine also. Uh, make sure you should know that only the slave nodes contains the actual data. What is actual data here? 1 lakh text documents. Those 1 lakh text documents will be stored in the slave machines only but not in the master machine but not in the client machine. For this what I am going to do is as a user I am having those text documents with me. I will be submitting i'll be submitting those text documents to the client i will be developing the work in the client machine meaning i'll be submitting the one lakh text documents in the client machines how to submit for that we'll be using some commands hdfs commands uh, we'll discuss these commands in our, in, in our later classes okay with the help of a command i'll be giving the data one lakh text documents to the client machine that client machine will in turn submits the work work here work means the text documents to the master the work will be assigned to the master now the master what he's going to do is he is going to develop sub works he's going to divide the given work into sub jobs sub works after dividing the work into sub works meaning those one lakh text documents will be divided into Small, small documents like 10,000 10, documents, one, one subwork, another 10,000 documents as another subwork. Likewise, it will be divided. After dividing, it will be given to the, now the master will assign the subworks to the slave nodes. The slave nodes will receive those uh, 1 lakh text documents. Not uh, 1 lakh text documents by each slave node. Those 1 lakh text documents are further divided it, divided and part of the uh, one lakh text documents is given to each of the slave nodes. After uh, receiving those data by the slave nodes, the slave nodes will store into the hard disk whichever available in that machine. If it is successfully stores that data then our task one will be completed. Okay. So, students, uh, by this time we need to understand the flow between the Hadoop client, the master and the slave nodes. The Hadoop client will develop the work, submit it to the master. The master will subdivide that work into subworks and those subworks will be assigned for further processing to the slave nodes. One more thing you need to be uh, known here that is master does not uh, store any data whatever the data we are speaking that is one lakh text documents those documents are not stored in the master node those documents are that data the actual data that is actual data the actual data will be uh, stored in the slave nodes only but not in the 
master node but not in the client machine also fine fine so the next one is uh, we have done with the task one we have successfully stored one lakh text documents into the slave nodes what is the next task processing those one lakh text documents in such a way that we need to find the frequency of word big man further what i am going to do as a user as a programmer i am going to write a map reduce programming program for that a work for that i'll be writing a code a map reduce code in order to process all those one lakh documents i'll be submitting it to the master who will submit it to the master actually the client machine will submit it to the master how it will submit and all we'll be looking this in our later classes for that we, we are having some commands those commands i will discuss in our in in my later classes okay fine after submitting the work which work the code whatever i have written to process those one lakh text documents i'll be submitting it to the master okay the master will receive that code and it will make lot of copies of that code and distributes that to the slave nodes whatever the work i have assigned to the to master that master will uh, divide it into sub work and assigns those sub work to the slave nodes now the slave nodes as it as they are having the actual data residing with them they will apply this logic on those data and retrieves the result and gives back the result to the client machine the result will be given directly to the hadoop client but not through the master node master node won't play any role here whatever the uh, output generated by the slave nodes that output will be given directly to the hadoop client machine okay this is the flow this is the architecture of hadoop how to store the data and how to process the data we'll be having master node we'll be having many slave nodes actual data will be residing in the slave nodes the master acts as an interface between the user and the slave nodes okay students